Short answer, a small, shallow draft, lightweight boat that is usually between 5 and 7 meters long. It has high sides with a flat, narrow bottom and sharp bows. The dory is and was common in the New England region and up to Newfoundland. Although it can be debated that the dory has a longer history, with light boats being used in Europe, it is the dory as known since the 18th century in the New England area that is this video's topic. The dory is a traditional fishing boat for use in coastal waters and on the open sea. It can be used to access the sea directly from the coast and as fishing boats set in the sea from larger vessels, usually schooners. The dory is defined by its simple lines and ease of build with the flat bottom and high sides made from straight boards running fore and aft and the hull follow the natural curve of the sawn plank, the wood is not steam bent into shape. The structure of the dory makes it easy and cheap to build, especially in an area with ample access to wood but not necessarily always access to the most advanced shipbuilding tools of the days. This made it very practical for New England of the past. Its most likely inspiration came from the interaction between the people of New England with the Canadian around the St. Lawrence River to the north. From here the dory was probably inspired by the French bateau. The bateau has the same flat bottom and simple lines as the dory, only the dory does not come in as many sizes as the bateau, the dory being more focused on fishing off the New England coast, while the bateau was also a transport vessel on the St. Lawrence River. A mark of the dory is its high sides compared to the length and width. This both added stability at sea and gave it ample room for a large catch of fish. A fishing dory can carry over a ton of load. The high sides also give ample freeboard even when fully loaded. The dory is known to have been easy to row, but was at the same time rowed at sea by experienced rowers, so it also owed much to its users. The dory, despite its flat bottom, curve up at both bow and stern, giving it its characteristic shape. This also added to its protection from the waves along with its high sides. Its flat bottom can however also make it tippy when not carrying a load as it will be raised high from the water. It is its high sides that give it its large volume to size. This volume gained from height comes with the catch of lessened stability without ballast. However, when going fishing for a living, one would wish to be able to bring back the largest possible catch and the experience of the fishermen would make up for the drawbacks for the most part. One can never be fully safe at sea and any boat has drawbacks that experience needs to counter. The dory was thus in the past a boat made with a high focus on utility. It was simple and cheap to make and could carry a large volume for its size owing to its particular shape. Nowadays the dory might have been originally designed as a New England fishing boat and fishing might have evolved away from the dories, but the dories too have evolved into more recreational use with versions made both for using a sail and to be used as a motorboat. And the dory has of course also been adapted for sports fishing rather than subsistence fishing. The dory does continue its history that started sometime in the 17th to 18th century to this day with the alterations in design that come with time and change in use. But like all smaller boat types, the dory has a lot of staying power, earning to the versatility of being a small affordable craft that can be used by a single person rather than a crew.
A reasonably skilled person will still be able to build a dory himself for the use he might see fit. This is the beauty of a design that does not require too much in tools and special skill. The dory was an adaptation of earlier European boat types to the specific North American environment. It fitted its home in New England very well as a useful fishing vessel and its simplicity of design meant that versions of it would spread inland on the rivers and lakes of North America, where it still does service today.